We're going to try to pull one more photograph off here in front of the church. We got the rush hour traffic going by and everything, but let's see if we can get one more. Pretty church, white marble or white colored brick in the background here and so forth. The sun is hitting our couple directly. So what I really need to do is somehow or another reduce the light of the, on the church. I want to try to underexpose the church just a bit. I'm at a 400th of a second. That means I'm cheating the sink a little bit. I'm going to keep my subject in the flash sink part of the viewfinder, which will be the right-hand side as I'm on this vertical shot. And I'm going to ask Aaron to come in pretty close so that I can really reduce my f-stop down to, say, f-22 here. So Aaron, a little bit closer. Be sure you can light up both of their faces. And here we go. Let's see what we get. And we got the light coming in here. We got the church going a little bit dark. We got to be sure that we don't get that bouquet getting super big on us. Let's get a couple more. I need that veil pushed back a little bit more. It's throwing a real bad shadow on there. Okay, good. Okay, you guys kind of hugging again. Flowers a little higher. Good, good, good. Aaron, we're good. Happier again. Be sure you're not uh, throwing his shadow on her face. Megan, lean towards me some more. Good, again. And again, I need to allow a few seconds for the flash to recharge. Looking great, looking great. One more, big hug on each other, big hug. Great, 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 all righty. And I think we got it. Lots of stuff going on, traffic, noise, sun, heat, bright lights and everything. So anyway, it's a shot I might try to pull off at the very end. If we got it, we got it. If we don't, we don't. But I think we got something here in the camera. Well, we wrapped at the church, had a great time, got a great series of images as hopefully you've had a chance to enjoy and review here, but now it's on to the beach. We're looking at our watches. It's about 4.30, quarter of five. We got batteries running low. We have to head back to the studio, grab some new batteries and offload the, you know, the video and everything. So we got there, taking a little break, catching some ice waters on the way, get back and everything else. And then we're watching the sky. <laughs> this is like our third time we're trying to get down to the beach and get some photographs down at the beach. You know, the good old beautiful Florida uh, sunsets and everything. Scratching my head, I said, well, there's not a cloud in the sky hardly here. So we thought, well, we're gonna head over anyway. Over to the beach we went. And as we're pulling into the parking lot, I, at Honeymoon Beach is where we were going. I've been there about, four, that was my fourth time, as a matter of fact. But we pull in and we have behind us, I mean, in front of us is where the sun is setting. You can see the, the, the sun over the water. You know, it's still a little, it's still got about 20 minutes to go. But behind us are all these beautiful, beautiful clouds. They're in the wrong place. We needed them over the water. They weren't over the water. What was over the water? Nothing was over the water. I mean, I got a photograph I'm looking at right here. I have a band of blue haze or something over the water. Is the sun blasting through? Do we have dramatic sun rays and the sun, you know, the whole dramatic sunset? And the strategy this time was since I had this little narrow band of clouds or cloud structures, they weren't even clouds, just some kind of a cloud structure, just floating above the horizon line, not much, not much at all in my viewfinder. I thought, what am I going to do? I got the bride and the groom, it's going to, it goes about up to their ankles when I had them with the wide angle lens. And I thought what I need to do is somehow expand that, that cloud structure out just a bit so it would provide a background for my couple. Anyway, lens of choice if you're in that situation is a long telephoto lens. I strapped on the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, set it to about f4, 5, 6, somewhere in that range. Uh, we'll cover that in the video and we start shooting away. And what happened was, as I'm looking at the images here, What's so wonderful with sunsets, in my opinion, is how much they change over so short a period of time. And they're changing. It is always hectic as heck trying to get these photographs because as we're shooting them, the light's changing. The, the veil's blowing off the bride's head. You know, we're trying to get the decent expression. I got a telephoto lens on. The wind's blowing. They can't hear what I'm saying anyway but we were able to pull this off and we got some great images here. Uh, I remember some of the earlier ones. Uh, the problem was the sun was still kind of bright. I had to get Aaron, my assistant, I had to get that light, my, my off-camera flash, pushed into the scene and you're scratching your head. Why would he take a picture of his equipment? Well, when the sun is that bright earlier on, you know, I'm at an ISO 200 uh, on the camera. I have to be at a fairly small uh, aperture like F16. I'm at the highest shutter speed I can get away with, usually cheating the sink which we cover in, these, in this video, which we've done already. Cheating the sync means I'm using a faster sync speed, 320th of a second, 400th of a second, as opposed to the native sync speed at 250th of a second, so I can still burn that sky down just a little bit darker. Well, anyway, at F16, still, my flash, it's 200 watt seconds, it's not gonna carry 20, 30 feet to my subject, so I literally have my subject 
put it on the monopod and stick it into the scene. So I'm looking at a couple images right here where I'm actually seeing the flash, the equipment, and my assistant's hand putting, pushing the flash into the scene so that she can illuminate my bride and the groom. Well, what happens is that darkens the background substantially and we get a wonderful, wonderful result. You know, and taking the flash out is like nothing in Photoshop. That's a simple patch tool, you know, lasso the thing, drag it, it's gone, and it's done. So that's what we were doing here. And, you know, even as I'm looking through here, the other cool thing is the sun sets. The, uh, the, uh, the exposure is getting slower and slower, so you'll see the sky go from a nice bright burning orange to maybe just a little bit more subdued. I'll open up the shutter just a bit or, or slow down the shutter just a bit to get more exposure on the scene. It brightens back up again. Then we finally get down to the point where, where the exposure is getting pretty darn slow, but we're still working it. I'm using image stabilized lenses all the time. And, uh, and I'm still able to hand hold these things pretty darn low. The, the thing is, is, the subject can't be moving around too much. The other thing that we did was I had Aaron kind of create a backlight. So, so get this, I've got the sun setting in the background. I've got a little bit of orange left. I got a little reflections in the water of the orange of the sunset, the remnants of the sunset at that point. I want to light up the veil against them, wide angle lens. So I've got water, beach, sky, and I love how the sky changes color that late at night. It goes from orange, then it goes to light blue, then it goes to even a darker blue, and it goes to this very rich cobalt blue at the very top. And that really comes out when we're using these wide angle lenses. Anyway, that being said, that's the scene. I've set up the scene for you. How am I going to light it? Well, I want to separate the bride and groom from the background. I just don't want them to go into the, into the fog in the background, into the, the ending sunset. So I had Aaron, my assistant, take my quantum flash, get behind him, set it at, uh, my gosh, I think we we're up to about ISO 1600 at the time. So I, was, I just had her just blinking a little bit of light out. My gosh, if I would have the normal quarter power coming out of my 200 watt second flash, it would have just blown everybody away. So I think we had her somewhere around a 32nd power, maybe even a 64th power coming out of the flash. She's about 12 feet behind. You'll see all this on the video. And it just, just popped the veil just a little bit. But my gosh, now my light person's behind the bride and groom, and I need to bring some light onto the front of them. Why well, carry my little Z-Ray again, which you'll see in the video. Now, I, we've nicknamed it the Z-Ray. What it is, it's a Brinkman uh, dual Xenon flashlight. It's very high intensity, and it works great for this situation. So I had Ladon, my wife, pull out the, the, the Brinkman, the Z-Ray, and that became, we just pull the trigger, and it just lights up their face. And the other thing that's happened is it just the light fall off just falls off, you know, from their, from their chest on down. So it just puts this really nice kind of a soft spotlight right on their faces. So now imagine the photograph, I'll set it up because we're out on the beach, the wind's blowing, the microphone, I don't know if you, you can hear anything, I hope you can when we're out there shooting and everything, but it was cool how it came together and our finished result I thought was outstanding. Now here's the thing, I'm using this Brinkman flashlight, oh, it's, it's putting out what color temperature of light? It's putting out about a 2800 Kelvin temperature of light. That means I have to set my camera to not, you know, not out of white balance, not sunrise, not, not sunrise, not sunny day or whatever else. I actually set it to, a, to the Kelvin setting instead of tungsten, because tungsten isn't my favorite uh, setting, because tungsten is balanced for 3200 Kelvin, I went back to the 2800 Kelvin, and that is my default Kelvin setting on my cameras too. So anyway, camera is set to a 2800 Kelvin cover balance to balance the, the dual xenon flash illuminating the front of my bride and groom. I've got daylight all around, and I also have blue light, my flash coming in behind. So what do you think the scene looks like? Well, the scene looks cool because the way it looks is there is this blue hue all around them, all around the sky, because I'm on my 2800 Kelvin setting right here. So I've got the blue flash coming through, because it's blue now when my camera setting is set to the other Kelvin setting. This, the, the ambient light is blue, but what is perfectly color balanced? The light on their faces, because it's balancing that, uh, that, that Brickman flashlight that's putting illumination on their flash. So we have a really beautiful stylized image of our bride and groom as part of the last series that we did. I can't wait for you to get over and take a peek. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut my mouth right now and invite you to take a look at part three of the video.